Hey everybody, what's up? You're watching Sit Down. I'm DJ Sixsmith. Brad Stone is here with us. He's got his brand new book, Amazon Unbound, from Simon & Schuster. Brad, really nice to meet you. How are you? Thank you, DJ. Good. So you've been covering Silicon Valley for decades, and you've covered Jeff Bezos and Amazon, but this book is a little bit different. It gives you the full comprehensive history of him, the company, and everything in between. Why'd you want to write this book? Well, you know, Amazon dominates our lives. It, it, uh, it was a crutch during the pandemic. Um, it raises all sorts of questions about the dominance of one company, the power of one man. He's the wealthiest person in the world right now. And look, Amazon uh, is a force and it deserves scrutiny. So the, the book is kind of an examination of how it happened, um, how he became so powerful, how he amassed a $200 billion fortune, and you know, hopefully a little bit of a guide uh, for, for regulators and lawmakers uh, to evaluate Amazon's power and to understand how complex a business it is. Yeah, I mean, there's so many different layers to the story. Why don't we start with Bezos himself? I mean, what's most fascinating to you just about going from this nerdy computer guy in the 90s to becoming the wealthiest man in the world? Um, well, lot, lots of dimensions. It really is a transformation. The book is about a transformation. Um, it's almost a visible one that has happened right before our eyes because, you know, he, lo he looks so different. Um, I, the most interesting thing, though, is how, you know, he, he you, you see a lot of folks in Silicon Valley who are, are visionaries um, or inventors and then others who, you know, are capable of running large organizations. Um, and he kind of has the whole package, um, the good and the bad. You know, I write about Alexa and the invention of Alexa, and that's an idea that kind of springs right out of his head. He literally sends an email to his executive saying, we should build something, uh, a computer in the cloud, wh which responds to voice commands. But then on the other hand, you know, he runs these meetings and he'll rip up a document and throw it down the table because he's disappointed or he spotted a mistake. And so it's that combination of, of, of uh, inspiration and intimidation and invention um, that makes him such a fascinating character. He's somebody that brings a little bit of everything to the table. The Alexa story is super interesting, right? Because they were trying to do the phone thing. They're trying to figure out what the next big thing is. And then this Alexa thing just kind of pops up out of nowhere. So when you think about it now, I mean, Alexa is ubiquitous. It just was a random, random idea at one point. What's the craziest part of that story to you? You know, in the book, I've got the first whiteboard sketch, um, you know, that he ever drew. I identify the voice of Alexa. So this wow. was kind of a big secret inside Amazon. Uh, who, whose voice is that? Um, I, I found the voice actress. Uh, her name is Nina Raleigh. Uh, she's a bolder voice actress. Um, I had to do a lot of like detective work to figure that out. That was sort of funny. Um, and then the way in which Amazon kind of, before it launched it, brought it out into the world in secret. Uh, and had paid people to kind of come through and 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 recite commands and ask for things. And, and none of these workers knew what the heck they were doing. Um, it was also bizarre, but what Amazon was doing was collecting data to make the AI smarter. And, and look, it, that was super expensive. Uh, and it was one of the reasons why they were able to launch something that was that was uh, that worked in the back in 2014. So I think what's interesting also is that you talk to a ton of different people for this book, right? On the record, off the record, some work there, some don't anymore. What was most surprising about those conversations? Was it easy to get information from people or was it really hard to crack through that wall? It's difficult. Um, you know, this is true of all tech big companies, particularly tech companies, particularly Amazon, that people are, are scared of talking. You know, they've signed non-disclosure agreements. Um, they're fearful that the company with very deep pockets will come after them. And you know, and then it's the goal of the of the journalist uh, to to go and make people feel comfortable. And so, you know, it was a lot of surprising stuff. Um, you know, from from uh, you know why Amazon invested so heavily in China and India to why Bezos started to open grocery stores and bought Whole Foods. That's a chapter in the book. Um, why he bought the Washington Post. The whole story of HQ2, if people remember that, this bake off among cities, I, I obtained the, the documents inside Amazon where they're deliberating and discussing the risks and the PR kind of challenges of it. And then, you know, people probably remember Jeff Bezos' kind of personal scandal and the National Enquirer, and, and I get into, into all that. And that's a fascinating story of one of the most disciplined and private and careful people in the world whose private life is suddenly all over all the media.